Hello Mila, hello Jack, hello everybody else is watching and welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's book is called Loveykins. Angela Bowling took her shopping bag and set off for the village. It was a bright spring morning, but the wind had blown all night in the great woods and there were leaves and fallen branches everywhere. And... There was something else. My goodness, said Angela. It's a baby bird blown out of his nest. He needs someone to look after him. She wrapped him up carefully in her scarf and off home they went. When they got there, she added a shawl and an old cardigan so that the little bird was warm and safe. Then she set him into a decorative basket that once used to hold flowers. She fed him with spoonfuls of warm milk. He must have a name, said Angela. I shall call him Augustus. Only the best was good enough for Augustus. She fed him on creamed carrot, chocolate eclairs, black forest Gatto, and boxes of chocolates with assorted centres. Augustus ate the whole lot. Who's a loveykins then? said Angela. Next morning, Angela bought a smart new pushchair. It had a special umbrella to keep off the rain and the sun. Every morning after that, Angela would wrap Augustus up carefully so that he didn't catch cold, and they would set off for the village. They met Elsie Lyons and the twins by the duck pond, Miss Twyford and her dollies in the high street, and Harold and his brother Gerald with their dog Wellington outside the library. At the village store, Angela Bowling bought all the best things to eat she could find. Augustus ate and ate, and as the days went by, he grew bigger and bigger. At last, he was too big for his basket and too big for the pushchair. Especially with all those cardigans and eiderdowns wrapped around him to make sure he didn't catch cold. So Angela Bowling bought a brand new garden shed, especially for Augustus. Every morning, she would take him a tray of good things to eat. And then, once again, there came a night of dreadful weather, and huge gales blew through the great woods. In the morning, Angela Bowling got up, put on her dressing gown, and stepped out to see how her little lovykins had spent the night. But what did she see before her? The garden shed had been blown flat by the gales, and there, with eiderdowns and cardigans strewn about him, stood Augustus, shaking his wings. And Angela Bowling fainted clean away. Augustus covered her safely with a pink, flowery eiderdown. Then, his wings creaking slightly with lack of use, he began to fly. He flew through the village, over Elsie Lyon and her twins, over Miss Twyford and her dollies, and over Harold and his brother Gerald and their dog, Wellington. He flew up into the trees of the great woods. There, he ate several beetles and the remains of a dead squirrel. And then he flew on up, up into the bright sky. Further and further he rose, circling on the warm winds high above the clouds. Far below he could see Angela Bowling sleeping peacefully under the pink flowery eiderdown, and stretched out before him such prospects, such vistas. It took Angela Bowling a long time to recover from her shock, but after six months she had her garden shed rebuilt. 
In it, she started a wonderful collection of cactuses of all shapes and sizes. And every so often, just when she is least expecting it, there is a rustle of wings and Augustus is there on the roof of the shed. He brings her a present, a dead mouse, perhaps, or a few beetles. She never eats them. The end. Goodbye, Mila. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.